Psalms 52. To the chief musician, Mashio, which means instruction, a psalm of David, when Doag the Edomite came and told Saul, and said unto him, David is come to the house of Himelech. You'll find that in 1 Samuel 21. So this song, David's writing about this experience, about this man, Doag. Doag murdered the priest of God by orders of King Saul. David writing about, or two, actually Doag, who's dead. Why, behold, why boastest thou thyself of mischief? So evidently he was great boasting. Oh, mighty man, Doag. He was a military figure in King Saul's army. The goodness of God endureth continually. The long-suffering of God. What's David saying? He's saying the long-suffering that we know about God today. You know, God hasn't called the rapture because not everybody's got, gotten saved that's going to get saved. And those who don't get saved, they have not heard the gospel to get a chance to reject it or receive it. And he's saying, you know, Doag, God's giving you plenty of opportunity to get right. And in the time of Doag, remember, you got the mischievous, evil King Saul, who's a type of Antichrist. And you got David, who's of God, type of Jesus Christ, doing right. And Israel is at a standstill, either go and follow the wicked king or go and follow David, who's doing right. And David has been anointed to king, but he's not got the kingdom yet, while Saul is still living. And everybody knew that David's been anointed. Even King Saul knew himself. Thy tongue, Doeg, devises mischief. And this is what happened when he came to King Saul, like a sharp razor. Doeg went to King Saul and said, listen, I saw him like give David, you know, the, the sword of Goliath. I seen him give him, you know, the bread and some food and some drink and all that. And what Doeg did, he didn't tell the full truth of David and Himelech. He's like, yeah, he helped David, but David... And Ahimelech did not go against you, King Saul. David was on the run. David lied to Ahimelech. You know, the king sent me about the business and I, I forgot my sword and it's just so urgent a business. Listen, King Saul, David's afraid of... No, he didn't say that. And Doag left the impression that, you know, the priests are helping David, the enemies of King Saul. That razor, you know, you, you slip, you cut someone's hair or you shave it and you just go slit their throat. Working deceitfully. So when he came to King Saul, it wasn't, you know, or I, I misunderstood or I just didn't. No, he deceit. For the purpose to tell Saul, hey, David, your enemy was helped by them. So you got to have scripture with scripture to study and to realize you get the whole story. You're not going to get the whole story on, on two pages of the Bible. You're going to need two, three books, five books of the Bible to get the truth. David knew about Doag. David was in King Saul's army. Thou lovest evil, Doag again, more than good. And lying, rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. So David is telling us when Doag went to King Saul, he's a liar, and it was all in deceit. And when the family, when the family of Himlek came, David says, "I knew when that guy was there, I knew it'd be to your. You come with me, I'll protect you." But I knew. Thou, Doag. Loveth all devouring words. So when Saul said, I want somebody to kill those priests, they're like, hey, I'll do it, king. The nation of Israel wouldn't do it. The Israeli troops of King Saul, uh-uh. <laughs> what is wrong with you, brother? Brother, you know, they're, he's of Benjamin. Well, who's going to slay him? They're like, I'll do it. 
Why would the Doag did? He set the whole thing up. It's almost like he had something against him, like in the priest himself, and he was looking for an excuse to do it. Thou lovest all divine words, and thou, oh thou deceitful tongue, you liar. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. No eggs in hell today. He shall take thee away. He did, death. And pluck thee out of thy dwelling place. He has no home no more but hell. And to root thee out of the land of the living, death, Selah. Look at that. Second Advent reference. Run Doeg as a type of Antichrist. Guess who some of the people that Doeg the Antichrist is going to kill according to the scripture? The priests. What's that mean? That means the priests are going to know who the priests are in the tribulation period. When the temple is there. That moment at the three and a half years. When that veil is. I don't know if the mercy seat is going to be there. Not God's mercy seat at least. And when, it, when the Antichrist is sitting. Where he ought not to be sitting. Jesus said behind that veil. Well who's going to be the first people. He's going to attack. The priests that walk in there. Where do you read that in the scriptures? The book of Luke. I always forget. Uh, why is John, why is John the Baptist's father taking so long? He's forever. He's taking so long. What's going on in there? What's going to happen in the tribulation? Why is the high priest taking so long? Why are the priests taking so? They're dead. Who killed them? God? No, the Antichrist. And then he'll proclaim that he is God. That's something to think about. That that's a possibility. It's going to happen. First people are going to start getting killed would be those priests that go in there, begin to sacrifice, and there he is behind that veil. The righteous also shall see, and fear, and shall laugh at him. Doag. Wouldn't it be an interesting little thing that in the millennium of Jesus Christ and, you know, they're reminiscing and Jesus talking to him about the tribulation period. <laughs> yeah, I remember that handicraft. Man, that guy, oh man, Lord Jesus, you took care of him, did you? Yeah, I took care of him. He's in the lake of fire right now. Yeah. It's, uh, according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Wouldn't it be the Antichrist would be a joke in the millennium. Lo, this is the man, the man, Doag, the man of sin, that made not God his strength. That is definitely the Antichrist, definitely. But trusted in the abundance of his riches. Oh, I guess Doag has some money. And strengthen himself in his wickedness. That's the Antichrist. That's what Paul writes to the Thessalonians. That wickedness of the Antichrist. David. But I am like a green olive tree. It's a type of the Holy Spirit. It's a type of the olive oil used to anoint. David's like, I'm anointed. That guy ain't. You know what Christ means? It means anointed. Antichrist against God's anointed. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. There were, actually, yeah, there was all. I believe Solomon made of the doors. I think that's gonna be something to look at into. I think I think Solomon made the doors of the of the temple of the olive tree. That'd be something interesting. Now, if that is true, and I couldn't be wrong. If that is true, then the door, then you've got David type of Jesus Christ. There's the door of Jesus. I didn't see that. Now I have to look into that. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. And for David, he does. 
I, David, will praise thee forever. Because thou hast done it. Done what? <laughs> Got rid of Doag, the enemy of David. And I will wait on thy name. Oh, look at the second advent there. It comes with a name that no man knew. King of kings and Lord of lords. For his name is the word of God. Now who would know that? David. For it is good before thy saints. Who goes before the saints? Jesus Christ. Second advent. There it is. Another millennial passage with the Antichrist and Jesus Christ. David, a type of Jesus Christ. 